Not all the time, but... Not all the time, but... All the time. All the time. <coughs> Hi, Douglas Truth here. And I'm in the Mojave Desert and words fail me. That's the name of the show, if not an actual fact, a momentary fact, because obviously they fail me all the time. Not all the time, but at times they fail me. Um, you know, I was, uh, Mojave Desert's a fantastic and frightening place at times. Like today, it was filled with this gray, it was just like a fucking horror movie. It, it was like filled with this mist, and the sun's going down in front of my eyes, and the, it's lighting up this gray mist, which is not mist, it's pollution from Los Angeles. And it just looked horrible, horrible. In fact, I was gonna get out right in the middle of the lowest part of the Mojave Desert and do some shooting there, and it's like, no, do not, do not get out here. Do not get out here. Get on the other side, get up, get some elevation. But when you're crossing the Mojave Desert, any of these deserts out here in the Southwest, you see trains all the time. Mile long trains, mile and a half long trains. Five engines in the front and four in the middle, stuff like that, huge long trains. Filled with what? is the question I ask myself. And I know the answer, it's junk. It's stuff, it's stuff that goes into Walmarts and Targets and to the dollar stores and stuff like that. It's just junk. Which brings me to today's topic, which I'm afraid is a repetition, but that's just the way it goes, I'm sorry. Um, like, what are we here for? Because I, I demand something more than a situation in which all we do is make that stuff for each other and sell it to each other. And then take it to thrift stores and then somebody else, you know, it's like recycled until it's just little bits of plastic floating around in the Pacific gyre. Is that how you pronounce that? You know, I want more and I know there's more. Now, I'm not speaking so personally. I mean, I'm very, very lucky or, or, or very, very deluded. It doesn't really matter which one it is to me. Um, that I have a job. Like, I, 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 after all these years of being alive, I finally figured out or figure out, but I found out what I'm supposed to do. At least I'm getting closer to it. At least good enough to go. You know, I'm good to go. You know, I, I, I button up a toolbox and I hit the road and I do my job. Good. But the bigger picture, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still taunted by that. Like, what is humanity here for? And like, one of my favorite, I've always loved the Mayans for some reason. Basically for their artwork. It's so beautiful. But one of the things I loved about them was their, their cosmology was, was like an iterative one where, where the, the mother fathers, which was their term for the gods, had created the world many times. But, and this is the part I love the most, is that they didn't assume that everything the mother fathers did was perfect. So it's like the mother fathers make a world and it's like, you know, it didn't work out. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Try it. And so we're on the fourth or fifth or sixth or who knows really, who, who, who knows how to keep count, how, uh, what world we're in. But I love that idea because it makes me feel like I'm on the team. Like it's up to me to do the best that I can in this version of creation for the Mother Fathers, you know? But the most fascinating thing about the Mayans' take on this is, is that what they weren't just trying to build a cool world. I mean, you, you got to define that somehow, right? Cool in what way? According to what parameters? They, what they wanted was they wanted to build creatures that knew how to worship. Question mark, right? I'm sure they're not talking about sitting in pews and taking your hat off and singing these stupid hymns. No, what does that mean? What? So, so the larger question, taking it out of their language structure, is like, okay, we were built. We were built to do something. What was it? Because only if we know what it is can we move in that direction, right? I think it's fascinating, you know, but, you know, that's the way I am. Um, so, yeah, what are we here for? I do have to tell you that uh, uh, underneath all these assumptions and delusions, whatever they are, is a, is a certainty in my mind that some of you who are materialists may not incorporate into your world, which, which is that we are not alone. This is, I, it, you know, it's like Roy Batty says at Blade Runner, you people wouldn't believe what I've seen. You know, it's like I know 
that there's something else going on, that there are, other, there are non-human entities and non-living entities and so on and so forth. That's about all I know, but I know that for sure. And that puts a different take on stuff. That puts a much different take on stuff. You can try, it, it's like uh, that old Pete Seeger song, you know, I wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. It's not really like that, but it's like once you know something, you, you can try to forget it because of the comforts of the ordinary human world. Even its discomforts can be a comfort in that context. For some reason, I got this picture in my mind of the, uh, I don't know where it comes from, but you know, Frank, or is it Dave? I'm not, they're like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern in a way. Frank and Dave from 2001. Space Odyssey, Kubrick's greatest movie. Uh, one, Frank or Dave, whichever one it is, he gets killed by Hal, and he's he's tumbling away into the distance, into outer space. It's so lonely. It's so poignant. I guess he and then we humans out in the void somehow, on our way somewhere. What? 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 So crossing the Mojave Desert, those are my thoughts. Frank or Dave. Rosencrantz, or is it Guildenstern? Floating, tumbling off under the uncaring stars of H.P. Lovecraft forever. Wondering, did I leave the stove on? Or I don't know what they're doing, but anyway. I miss that dog. I miss that dog so much. I'm so lucky that I have neighbors that have a dog and they don't mind. They aren't too annoyed over my lovey-dovey with the dog. I mean, they're like, all right, all right. Because I know that can be extremely annoying to a dog owner to have somebody like me fancies himself the favorite of every dog, you know, come and uh, work out on their dog, because, you know, I just want them to know that I appreciate it. This is a sweet dog, but it's not Brindle. Brindle was really, really special. I might have to do a whole show on how special that dog was. Anyway, I wish you well, take care of yourselves and each other, and all that stuff. Okay, till next time, this is Doug Truth, and words fail me. From the Mojave Desert, bye. I'm going to Arcasanti. My friend Adam Cooper Turan might be there. But I want to check it out. I've heard there's a fabulous theater there where my friend Dorothy, also known as Death herself, might be able to do a show. Now, Arizona has got some incredible landscapes. We just came out of the valley in which Phoenix is located. And all of a sudden, we're up on this high, grassy plain. Where we are right now, see there's grass out there. See the freeway, there's grass out there. Now, down in Phoenix and Tucson way, there's no grass. It's just what we used to call just, just desert, you know? It's just rocks and sand and cacti and lizards. But up here, we're farther north and we're higher up and we're getting into what we call the high plains, the dry grasslands. It's still pretty darn dry, that's for sure. Oh man, that's better. Now this is like smooth as glass right here, this dirt road, for a little while at least. Here we got some, this is some pretty fantastic washboard right here too. I'm telling you. Oh. One, on that Kodiak Island trip, I had to drive about 40 miles of this stuff in my Jeep wagon here. It was one of my one and only camping trips I took while I was in Alaska. I didn't do that, I've lived in some fantastic places. Alaska for six years, but I never, I didn't hardly do any camping. Of course, I had a job that took me out into the wilderness a lot, but I thought, well, I ought to take my Smith & Wesson Model 39 and go out in the woods and, you know, do some camping, Alaska style, but I didn't, really didn't like it. I didn't like sleeping in the rain under cloth and being all by myself all the time. I would much rather stay, when it came to holidays especially, stay in downtown Anchorage because all the fucking people were gone. It was really nice. We just lay down the little K Street and we'll track everything.